politics was once a banned subject from poetry. I remember for many years, decades, when poetry magazines headed their submissions column with please do not submit political poetry. Um, it may have suffered because it is difficult to write, but good, powerful political poetry has been written and I came across some very exam interesting examples of this going through an American anthology of poetry which specialised in this area, political poetry in the modern period. The modern period is very roughly defined because it, it, it encompasses the, the, the American Harlem Renaissance of black writers in the, in, the, in the 20s, with writers from the 30s who were not necessarily black, but shared the passionate political and usually socialist convictions of these writers. Um, there does not seem to be any um, collected poems of these poets. They survive fugitively in anthologies like this, but I think they do need to be read, and they do need to be read more. Um, the most powerful is called I Want You Women Up North To Know by a poet born in 1912 called Tilly Lerner Olson, and it is based on a letter by Filippo Ibarro in New Masses, 9th of January 1934. And as you will notice, it brings back sweatshops, this time not in Bangladesh, but this time in Mexico. I want you women up north to know how those dainty children's dresses you buy at Macy's, Wanamaker's, Gimbel's, Marshall Fields are dyed in blood, a stitched in wasting flesh down in Santonio, where sunshine spends the winter. I want you women up north to see the obsequious smile, the sales lady's trill, exquisite, madam, exquisite cleats. Vanish into a bloated face, ordering more dresses, gouging the wages down, dissolve into Maria Ambrosa Catalina, stitching those dresses from dawn to night, in blood, in wasting flesh. Catalina Rodriguez, 24, body shriveled to a child's at 12. Catalina Rodriguez, the last stages of consumption, works for three dollars a week from dawn to midnight. A fog of pain thickens over her skull, the parching heat breaks over her body, and the bright red blood embers embroider the floor of her room. White rain stitching the night, the bourgeois poet would say. White gulls of hands darting, veering, white lightning threading the clouds. This is the exquisite dance of her hands over the cloth, and her cough, gay, quick staccato, like skeletons' bones clattering, is appropriate accompaniment for the aesthetic dance of her fingers. And the tremolo, tremolo, when the hands tremble with pain, three dollars a week, two fifty-five, seventy cents a week. No wonder two thousand eight hundred ladies of joy are spending the winter with the sun after he goes down. For five cents, who said, said this was a rich man's world, you can get all the loving you want. Clap and sift ain't much worse than sore fingers, blind eyes and TM. Maria Velasquez, spinster, for 15 cents a dozen garments for children she has never had. Catalina Torres, mother of four, to keep the starved body starving, embroiders from dawn to night. Mother of four, what does she think of? as the needle-popped fingers shift over the silk, and the stubble-coarse rags that stretch on her own brood, 
and just with the bony ridge that marks hunger's landscape, a fat little prairie roll bodies that will bulge in the silk skin needles. Be not envious, Catalina Torres, look. On your own children's clothing, embroidery, more intricate than any a thousand hands could fashion. There, where the cloth is ravelled or darned, designs multitudinous, complex and handsome, by poverty herself. Ambrose Espinosa trusts in God. Todos es Dios, everything is from God. Through the dwelling night, the waxing day, she bolsters herself up with it, for the pennies to keep God incarnate from Ambrosia, and the pennies to keep the priest in wine from Ambrosia. Ambrosia clothes gods and priest with handmaid's children's dresses. Her brother lies on an iron cot all day and watches. On a mattress of rags he lies. For twenty-five years he worked for the railroad. Then they laid him off. Racked days, searching for work, rebuffs, suspicious eyes of policemen. Goodbye, Ambrosia. Maybe in Dallas I find work. Desperate swing for a freight. Surprised hands, clutching air and the wheel goes over a leg. The railroad cuts it off, as it cut off twenty-five years of his life. She says that he prays and dreams of another world, as he lies there, a heaven, which he does not know was brought to earth in 1917, in Russia by workers like him. Women up north, I want you to know. When you finger the exquisite hand-made dresses, what it means... This working from dawn to midnight, on what strange feet the feverish dawn must come, to Maria Catalina Ambrosa, how the malignant fingers twitch over the pallid faces, jerk them to work, and the sun and the fever mounts with the day. Long plodding hours, the eyes burn like coals, heat jellies the flying fingers, down comes the night like blindness, Long hours more with the dim light of the lamp, the breaking back, weariness crawls in the flesh like worms, gigantic like earths in winter. And for Catalina Rodriguez comes the night sweat and the blood embroidering the darkness. For Catalina Torres, the pinched faces of four huddled children, the naked bodies of four bony children, the chant of their chorale of hunger. And for 2,800 ladies of joy, the grotesque act gone over, the wink, the grimace, the feeling it like a baby. And for Maria Velasquez, spinster, emptiness, emptiness, flaming with dresses for children she can never fondle. And for Ambrosa Espinosa, the skeleton body of her brother on his mattress of rags, Boring twin holes in the dark with his eyes to the image of Christ, remembering a leg and twenty-five years cut off from his life by the railroad. Women up north, I want you to know. I tell you this can't last forever. I swear it won't. <laughs>